Hey guys, and welcome to another vlog. I'm on my travels again, um, currently in Hong Kong. I don't know if you can see very well out the window there. It's a very rainy day here in here in Hong Kong. Um, just completed a week of traveling in China, and for the first time, rather than fly between the cities, we decided to take the high-speed train. So today's vlog, about high-speed trains in China. o'clock in the morning. I can't sleep. And it's raining. <laughs> Perhaps that's a good thing though. Maybe it will inspire. So, high speed trains. Um, so if you come from the UK, high speed trains are something we're not really used to. Um, our trains, quite frankly, are old and antiquated and positively creaking at the seams. Um, China, however, has a wonderfully modern uh, high speed, and by high speed I mean sort of 200 mile an hour plus trains, uh, train network that runs between all the major cities. So if you're going to travel in China, I can highly recommend the high speed rail network. But if you're going to do it, there are three things I think you need to know about. So the first thing is booking your tickets. Now, until very recently, you couldn't do this online. You actually had to go to the train station and queue up and buy your tickets. You can now do this online. Um, make sure you go to the legitimate train uh, websites. There are lots of fakes out there and there might be people trying to take your money. So make sure you use the official official websites. They do generally have an English translation. There's a little button up in the top right corner that you can you can use to do this. So if you do have friends or colleagues in China who can do this for you and obviously speak the language, it's so much easier to, to get them to book the tickets. However, when you get to the train station, um, the majority of the signs are in English, so you will be able to find your way around. But it will seem very confusing because these places are massive. In fact, uh, here is a picture of the, the Hangzhou um, train station. It is bigger than Heathrow Airport, or bigger than one of the terminals at Heathrow Airport anyway. And there are a lot more people there. The queues at the ticket desks are quite long, so give yourself plenty of time to, uh, to get your tickets. But you'll have to pick them up in person and you'll need your, your ID that you use to book them, probably your passport in this case. You won't be able to use the automated ticket machines because you need a Chinese ID card to be able to use those machines. So give yourself plenty of time to pick your tickets up. Second thing to think about is when you're booking your tickets and you're choosing which class of travel you want to go, um, bear in mind you're gonna be on the train for quite a long time. Business class and first class tickets are not that expensive. In fact, our ticket to from uh, from Hangzhou to Beijing, which was a six-hour train journey, was actually less than flying. It, it cost a lot less than flying. It was a lot more comfortable. But you would think first class was the way to go. But actually, first class is a lower class than business class. So on these high-speed trains, business class is the, the best seat on the train. It is a very comfortable airline-style seat, fully reclined, you can sleep on it. Um, there is service in the, in the, in the business class cabin. So uh, if you can afford it, and again, it wasn't that expensive, a couple of hundred pounds maybe for a six-hour train journey, um, it was a wonderful way to travel. But first class, which is what I would call premium economy on an airline, um, was just as good. First class, perfectly acceptable for, for six hours, no problems at all. The trains barrel along very smoothly, you can sleep in the seats. Uh, it's, it's a really, really nice way to travel. But the third thing, and certainly for uh, a lot of Westerners, especially if you're not used to Chinese food, is take some food with you on the train. There is, uh, in most cases, there is the ability to buy food on the train but it is not very good quality and it is obviously for the Chinese market. So if you're, if you're not that familiar with Chinese food, um, then take something with you to eat because you're gonna be on that train for, like I say, six hours plus probably, depending on how far you're going. 
But if you are traveling in China, it is a wonderful way to travel. Um, in fact, given the problems they're having with uh, delays at airports, um, just to put it into perspective, flying back from Beijing to Hong Kong this weekend, what was supposed to be a three hour flight um, turned into almost seven hours on the airplane, which we sat on the ground for nearly three and a half of those. So if you can avoid flying, I really would recommend the trains in China. So. That's it for today's vlog. Um, I'm about to go get packed up and get on the flight and get back to the UK. So if you have been, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time back in the UK.